U.S. and its allies to trip into more blunders, and that means creating nonstop, perpetual war in the Middle East. Well, I, I'm going to make this interesting and disagree with everyone. Okay. Uh, I do not <laughs> accept the premise, <laughs> which probably isn't too much of a surprise. But nonetheless, I, I, I do. I reject the premise that the whole point of the so-called war on terror or investing in the mujahideen was to somehow fight terrorism or to make a better world. I would argue that if you really want to know what's happening with Middle Eastern policy, then you must read Oded Yunan's A Strategy for Israel in the 1980s. Now, in that document, which is pretty much being played out to a T right now and has been for many years, there were serious objectives for Israel. And Israel's main objectives were to expand and grow in line with the Greater Israel Project. And in order for it to do that, there would need to be an excuse to justify the expansion of Israel. And in order to, sow, to, to do that, we would have to sow the seeds of sectarian hatred and violence in the region. The number one target of this plan was Iraq. We've achieved that. That's not, yeah. a, that's not a failure. That's actually a success. Iraq is a failed state, largely. It is an absolute basket case. Sectarian hatred is, is absolutely insane. We see the beheadings and all of this madness, and we think it's a disaster. No, it's not at all. In fact, it's all part of the plan to break up Iraq into three different states. When we look at Syria, we also find that the, the goal is once again the same thing, sow the seeds of sectarian hatred and basically turn that nation into a basket case. This is happening according to plan as well. Now ISIS, funny enough, could stand for the Israeli uh, Secret Intelligence Service. Many people are seeing the very, be very benef big benefits to the state of Israel, the so-called Jewish state of Israel, by the breakup and the balkanization of the surrounding state. So actually, if you believe what's being told to you, and I just don't know why anyone would believe anything that comes out of the mouth of virtually any Western leader, whether yeah. it be Obama or Bush or any of the rest of them, all of these people are nothing but patent liars, and everything they say is pretty much the opposite of the truth. So okay. I don't accept virtually right, anything they say. Okay, good. Violence. Barack Obama did not bite at the opportunity to get involved in Syria a, a year ago. In fact, at the time when he was ready to start bombing Assad, uh, just That's about 13 months true. ago, and we have he backed off arming. as soon as we the first funding. excuse came we to, have to been, mind. We have been supporting ISIS. There is absolute continuity between the policies of Iraq and breaking it up and breaking up Syria as well. It is beyond naive to suggest that the U.S. doesn't have its fingerprints all over ISIS. In fact, tell me this. Why has ISIS, why has ISIS never once, or al-Nusra Front, or al-Qaeda, not once have they attacked Israel? In fact, ISIS militants are getting medical attention in the Golan Heights and in Israel itself. What does that tell you? There is absolute continuity, but the actual well, policy, no, just like the project for a new American century laid out very clearly that a, quote, new Pearl Harbor would be necessary yeah. to achieve this goal of full-spectrum dominance, you could never tell the American people or the world, for that matter, we're going to fight wars of aggression where we're going to have to invade and occupy, we're going to have to spend hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars to achieve the goal of full-spectrum dominance, which is to control, absolute control, over air, land, sea, and space, and cyberspace. The American people never would have bought it, so you can't tell them that. You have to tell them a bunch of lies. And we well, see this over what, and what over you have again. To do, what you have to do, Ken, if I well, can go... It would, it would absolutely I, no question that there must always be a boogeyman. In fact, you're sitting in Russia now. For 50 years plus, we were fighting this Cold War that really was an absolute charade to begin with. There never really was a threat of a Soviet invasion. And for decades, we spent insane amounts of money developing nuclear weapons to the point of really completely, totally collective insanity. And here we sit today in a world that threatens a third world war with a policy that is clearly intended to de totally destroy Syria. Let's see what happens. If we take Bashar al-Assad out of the equation in Syria, does anybody with half a brain not understand that that vacuum that's going to be created is going to be a vacuum filled by the most powerful interests there? And who is that right now? Well, that would be our best friends and allies, these little Frankenstein monsters that we create, whether it's al-Qaeda or al-Nusra Front or the latest ISIS monster that we've created. Those are the ones that are going to fill that vacuum, and that fits perfectly in line with Odid Yanan's A Strategy for Israel in the 1980s. And if these other two gentlemen haven't read that document, I seriously suggest you do. Another thing that's really worthy of pointing out is the so-called Islamic State is anything but Islamic. And yes, there is a war on Islam. Islam is very understood by many Muslims around the world to be absolutely 100% forbidden for you to forcibly 
forcibly convert somebody to Islam or kill them. This is totally untrue. Back in the medieval times, when there was Muslim empires, it was an absolute understanding and policy am amongst the Muslims of who were in charge at that time that those who practiced whatever religion were allowed to continue practicing that religion, and they were not even forced to pay taxes into the Muslim empire itself. However, however, if people wanted to practice that religion, they would not be able to derive the benefits of the tax system and so on and so forth. The bottom line is no Muslim, no Muslim in their right mind would justify going in and literally executing men, women, and children simply because they don't convert to your religion. These people are not Islamic. They are creations of the monster, which is the empire of the United States and all its cohorts in Israel and England in particular. And this monster is purposely created to justify the continuing insanity of the never-ending war policy, which is really the core of America. And that is exactly why I renounce my U.S. citizenship. This madness cannot be considered anything but the major threat to the world. Okay, Peter, in New York, one of the things we have seen... Uh... There, there are very obvious solutions. One is to arrest the traitors in the U.S. Congress and White House who have sworn to uphold the U.S. Constitution, and somehow the American people have sat by while the president has afforded himself the power to execute anyone, anywhere, anytime for any American citizen to be tamed without any due process of law, no representation, incognito, and theoretically he could be condemned to death by a military tribunal in secret and executed. All of this operating under supposed supposedly the United States Constitution. So all of these traitors need to be arrested, first and foremost. When Netanyahu came to the Congress a couple years back, he received 29 standing ovations by these cowardly chicken hawk traitors. So the American patriots need to stand up and grab a pair and ultimately have some integrity and get rid of these uh, traitors. Secondly, cut off all funding to Israel. Israel is a pariah state, a criminal state. It is committing active policies of genocide by the legal definition of the word according to Black's Law Dictionary. That country needs to be cut off right now. All of their attention needs to turn inward. Stop your little empire endeavors and full spectrum dominance and all of this sort of madness. Start taking care of your infrastructure back home. Start taking care of the American citizens who have worked their whole lives and now find themselves wondering how they're going to keep a roof over their head. All of that is very obvious and very sensible. Or America can continue to decline into an absolute total pariah state, hated and resented around the world, and maybe bring the whole world into World War III. I would prefer that we do the former instead of the latter, but ultimately we need some serious change in government, and that means getting rid of these traitors. Okay. M 